Welcome to Simply Balance, you guys. My name is David Ginsheimer, and in this video, we're going to be talking about shoulder injuries and how you work with them from shoulder impingements to shoulder tears. Um, what is the process as a Pilates instructor to working with those shoulder problems and what we can do to really make a difference? If you're interested in this topic, make sure you like the video and subscribe and stay tuned for more information. So as of recently, as a blood instructor, one of the most common things that I have been seeing are shoulder injuries. Now there's a lot of different types of shoulder injuries out there, but the most common ones that you're gonna be seeing are gonna be some sort of impingement that they're getting in their shoulder or some sort of rotator cuff tear. Um, sometimes you may see some arthritis of some sort building up in the shoulder. And so what we're gonna be talking about is what do we do or what's actually happening in the shoulder as well as what kind of exercises we can do to help those clients or help ourselves if, if you're doing this for yourself to benefit you with any kind of shoulder injuries that you may have. Uh, so first off, let's really talk about what actually happens in the shoulder and what's going on. So one of the common things that you're gonna see in the shoulder is a shoulder impingement or potentially a shoulder tear, tear or maybe even some bone spurs building up. Well, that actually happens between the humeral head here and the acromion. So you have this little bone sticking off the side of your humerus that's called your greater tubercle. That greater tubercle ends up coming into contact with this acromion bone. So what happens is as you lift your arm, that bone comes in and it actually ends up causing a little scrape every time you lift your arm to the side. This generally happens when you have poor mechanics of your scapula. So when the scapula isn't functioning right, the humerus tries to do more work. And in return, that deltoid pulls that uh, greater tubercle into the acromion. Well, if you look on my other little um, example here, you can see that there's a muscle that actually comes down and attaches to that greater tubercle on the humerus. That muscle is called the supraspinatus. Well, if that supraspinatus comes into contact with that acromion, it can actually cause damage to that muscle. And that's where that impingement comes in. You're impinging the supraspinatus. Um, and if you do it long enough and, and continue to let that impingement grow, it ultimately can tear the supraspinatus muscle um, in your shoulder. And that's where that rotator cuff tear comes from, that, that common thing that you hear a lot. Um, also, when you are letting your arm lift and scrape like that, that's also where bone spurs can potentially build up or arthritic action can happen between those two areas. So when we're looking at the shoulder, we need to be very aware of that potential area, so that acromion as well as the greater, uh, greater tubercle and what, what they're doing in relation to one another. So next, let's talk about um, some things that we need to avoid when we're working with people with these issues. Well, the number one thing that we need to avoid is probably overhead movement. Because if you think about it, as you take your arm above your head, what's happening to that greater tubercle? It's coming into contact with that acromion. Well, if it's already inflamed or impinged or even torn, then those areas are only gonna get more inflamed the more you take your arm above your head. So the number one thing that you need to avoid when you have any kind of shoulder injury is overhead movement. Until the shoulder injury is healed or the inflammation has died down, overhead movement is gonna cause a lot of irritation in that joint, specifically between those two, areas, those two uh, points. So that's the number one thing, avoid overhead movement. The second thing that we need to do is we need to strengthen the rotator cuff muscles. So you have four rotator cuff muscles. Now the one that we're having the most issue with is that supraspinatus muscle that comes down. But we have three other muscles that are not getting interfered with. So the first one's called your subscapularis. Your subscapularis attaches to the front medial portion of the humerus and then comes into the, the scapula and he does internal rotation. And then the other one that we have is going to be your uh, supraspin uh, sorry, infraspinatus and teres minor. So your infraspinatus and teres minor attaches to the posterior portion of your scapula and then wraps around the lateral uh, posterior portion of the humerus and they do external rotation. So those two together um, are what we're going to really focus on for trying to stabilize the glenohumeral joint. So let's look at those two exercises real quick. So the first exercise that we're going to look at is external rotation. Um, when I do external rotation, I always like to put something underneath the arm. Um, so one of the things that you're going to notice when you don't put something underneath the arm, I'm going to use Mr. Bones as an example here, is that the actual head of the humerus gets pulled outward. So a lot of times we do external rotation and we do it with our elbow attached to our hip. But well, the problem is with that is it's actually pulling the head of the humerus away from the glenoid fossa. So instead, we kind of want to angle the elbow 
outward so that we're forcing the head of the humerus into the socket. So I'm going to put the bones out of the way here. What we're going to do is we're going to take that ball and we're going to put it underneath between our rib cage and our uh, humerus. And then from here, we're going to take a TheraBand. And you can do this on the reformer as well. It doesn't have to be uh, on a uh, Cadillac or with a TheraBand. You can do it with springs. You can also lie on your side and do this with a weight. But from here, we're going to keep everything nice and stable. The carriage will, or your torso won't move. And we're going to pull outward into external rotation and then slowly control back in. Pull out into external rotation and slowly control it back in. Now, in this movement, we're trying to work that infraspinatus and teres minor. Now, second to that exercise, we're going to do internal rotation. So we're also getting that subscapularis. So from here, you're going to take that ball, you're going to put it in between the arm once again, and we're going to do internal rotation. Now, this is really important. When we do internal rotation, we want to make sure that the shoulder is flat. One of the common things that I'll see here is that people roll their shoulder forward as they're doing that internal rotation. You want to keep the humerus nice and tucked into the socket as we do our internal rotation. So one of the things that you want to, really want to look for though is if those elbows are out, you're angling the head of the humerus into the socket as you do this. Okay, so the third exercise in this series actually deals with the scapula. So we talked about the, the glenohumeral joint and we talked about strengthening the glenohumeral joint. But now, really what's causing a lot of these issues is a dysfunctional scapula. And that's what the humerus actually sits on, is the scapula. So we're going to look at mobility of the scapula, as well as some stability exercises of the scapula. So the first thing that we're going to look at is um, it's called sternum drops. A lot of people are familiar with this if you're in the Pilates community. You're going to come onto your hands and knees. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to try to squeeze your shoulder blades all the way into the spine to where they're pinching together. This is called retraction. And then you're going to pull those shoulder blades apart as far as you can, trying to get a stretch in between your shoulder blades. So once again, you're retracting them together, pulling them apart. Retracting them together, pulling them apart. And as you get stronger in this exercise, then you can slowly progress it to a weighted variation. So you can move forward and go into kind of like a modified push-up position, and you can do retraction and protraction. Retraction, protraction, and ultimately work your way up into a full plank position Retraction, protraction. Now obviously you're not going to jump right into that your first time, especially when you have that shoulder injury. But when we're working with our clients, we may start with sternum drops for the first couple of weeks, or with yourself, just doing the ones on your hands and your knees. And then over time, you're going to progress them up, or progress yourself up into a full plank position. The next exercise, your fourth exercise, is going to be uh, telescope arms. So what you're going to do is you're going to lie on your side, and actually I've climbed your one wall a little bit here. Lie on your side, and what you're going to do is reach your arm forward as far as you can, getting as, that the top hand past your bottom hand, and then you're going to drag it along the arm all the way back, keeping your knees together here, and then trying to release your arm all the way behind you and get your shoulder to the ground. Do that again. Reach it forward, go as far forward as you can, pull it back, going as far back as you can. Now, over time, once that um, shoulder improves, and are no longer having any kind of inflammation in that area, we can start adding a little bit of overhead movement for our last exercise, this is our fifth exercise. You're gonna reach that arm forward, you're gonna drag it along the ground, keeping it on the ground the whole time, going above the head, all the way around, keeping those knees down, going over the hip, and back to the starting position. And that is called pinwheel. Um, so those are your five exercises that I would recommend for shoulder injuries. Now be careful, especially with that fifth one, until after the inflammation has died down and you're no longer having any pain. So just remember, avoid going overhead with that arm as much as possible. Strengthen the rotator cuff muscles. Work on your mobility of the scapula as well as some strengthening with sternum drops of the scapula. And you guys will start to see huge improvements in those shoulders. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this information was educational and helpful for you, um, whether you're a student or whether you are actually an instructor um, and you're trying to help your students out. Um, if you liked this information, like the button, hit that like button, as well as uh, subscribe to the video. Add any comments below that you may have about this topic, um, and I'll try to my best to try to answer those questions for you guys. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.